Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. My name is Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up a basic check register in Microsoft Access to track your checking accounts. I'll show you how to track which items have cleared the bank so you can get a good idea of what your actual balance is versus what the bank says your balance is. Today's question comes from Shane from Sacramento, California, one of my Platinum members. Shane says, any tips for keeping track of my expenses in a simple check register for access? I'd like to be able to track which items have cleared the bank so I know how much is actually in my account versus what the bank says is in my account. A running balance would also be nice. Well, Shane, setting something like this up in Access is very easy to do. Of course, there are lots of programs out there like Quicken or QuickBooks that do this for you, but one of the benefits of using Access is you can custom tailor it to get exactly what you want. You can enter the information exactly like you want it. You can generate reports exactly like you want it. That's why we use Access, right? To build stuff ourselves. So let me show you how to set up a simple check register using Microsoft Access. Let's begin by creating our check register table. So create, table design. Start off with an ID. That'll be our auto number, of course. Every table should have one, pretty much. Let's do a check number. And this is a short text field. And I like to use text for that because sometimes I've seen companies that had checks that had letters in them. Or some companies use it for a code or you could put anything you want in that field. That's just so you know what check you wrote. Let's put in a check date. That'll be a date time. Normally I would default this to something, but I kind of don't want people having a default in there. That way it forces them to type in the actual date of the check. Let's throw a description in there. Again, short text. I like to put is cleared as a yes, no and we'll default that to no, right? We'll check these off when the actual check is cleared from the bank. Now there's two ways to handle the amount. In my previous classes, I used to just put amount in as one field and for credits, like a deposit, I would put in a positive number and for debits, like a check being drawn, I'd put in a negative number. I did that in my original class when I covered this, which was back in Access Expert uh, 29 and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that technique. However, I've found that since most banks on their websites and in your check register, your, your actual printed check register book and in ledgers, they usually show it as two columns, one column for debits and one for credits and people are used to entering them in that way. So I'm going to show you how to do it that way in this class. It's easier on your end user to think, okay, put it in the debit column instead of putting it in as a negative number. It's just a matter of data entry. As far as the computer cares internally, it doesn't really matter. And we'll make a query field that will calculate it accordingly for our register. So I'm going to put in debit in here as a currency and credit as a currency. And they'll both be entered as positive numbers. Okay, let's save this as my check register, check reg T we'll call it. Primary key defined, yes, that's our ID up top. Let's put in some sample data. All right, no check number, check date, let's put in uh, 1 1. Description opening balance, it's cleared. And we started with $1,000 uh, as a credit. So you got to make sure you put something in the right column now, too. <laughs> All right, then I took a check out, check number 101 on 1 2, and that was for my gas bill. Hasn't cleared yet, and it was for $100. All right, check number 102 on 1.5. That was the electric bill, and that was for 250 103 came out on 110, let's say, and that was for water, and $65. Actually, let's keep these numbers easy so they're easy to calculate in our brains. <laughs> and then I had another deposit. On um, let's say uh, 115 deposit, and that was for $200. And again, see, I'm typing it in the wrong column. You gotta be careful. But I think that's still easier than telling people to remember to put these in as negative numbers. So this is fine. We're good. All right, let's save that. Now, what we're gonna do for calculations in our 
forms and reports and stuff is we're going to make an amount field that's going to essentially be what the amount of the transaction was. We're going to show in our calculation that uh, credits will be positive and debits will be negative. That way we can easily just sum up one column and we do that in a query. So create query design. All right. And I'll bring in my check reg T, the one table that we got. And I can close that. Bring in the star. That brings in all the fields. And now for our first calculated query field, I'm going to put right in here amount. That's going to be the total amount of the line, all right, of each line item, is going to be credit minus debit. What that'll do is all the credits will be positive numbers, and then the debits will show up as negative numbers because the credit will be zero on that line minus whatever. All right, so let's save this as our check reg Q, our check register Q, and let's take a look at what we got. There we go. That shows the amount of each line item. So now we can calculate our balances properly. If you've never done calculated query fields before like this, I've got other videos on how to do that, what calculated query fields are. Uh, I'll put links to them in the description below the video. Go look for those. If you don't know calculated query fields, go watch that video first and then come back and finish this one. I'm also going to calculate over here the cleared amount because I know if each line is cleared right and in order to calculate my my actual balance versus the balance that the bank might be telling me all right I need to know what the bank has cleared so for that I'm gonna come over here and type in cleared amount and for that we're gonna use an if function immediate if I I F that says if this then that all right so if is cleared comma amount comma zero and again I've got videos on how to use the immediate if I'll put links to that below essentially it says if this is true then set this value otherwise set that value so if is cleared we want this column to be whatever that amount is otherwise it's not cleared yet make this column zero okay that's that's the if function all right let's save it and see that in action close it reopen it and there we go. You can see the stuff that's cleared shows up over here in the cleared amount. That way, if you're looking at your actual bank uh, statement on your website, the bank's website, you'll see what they know about. They might not know about these checks yet. They might not have been presented. When you check one of these on, notice that. It automatically changes. All right, that's why we use the if function for that. All right, let's close that. Now let's make a continuous form so that we can view our check register in a form because we don't want our end users playing with our queries, remember? Plus, in our forms, we can add footers and have totals in those footers. So let's go to Create, and then Form Design. And I like to put a little splash of color in my backgrounds first, so let's make this. So we're doing checks. Let's do green. Let's do a light green. There we go. And we don't need to make that this big, so we can slide that up bottom up a little bit, like so. Resize the form. Okay, let's set the record source for the form so we know where we're getting our data from. Let's go right here to check reg Q. We'll use that query. That way we can pull in those new calculated fields that we just made, right? And we're also, while we're in here, going to set the default view to continuous forms. That's where I can see multiple records on it at a time, and it looks more like a spreadsheet. If you don't know what continuous forms are, I've also got videos on that as well. So, see, lots of my videos require the knowledge from previous videos. So I will point you to those videos if you don't know what I'm talking about. And that's why a lot of my classes, they're like level one, level two, level three, because level three requires the knowledge from levels one and two. But YouTube doesn't really work that way. So for the tech help videos, I'll tell you what other videos to watch first if you don't know what I'm doing. Okay, now let's go to design and add existing fields. And let's bring all of these fields in to our form. But this is going to look like a spreadsheet, so I'm going to turn on my form, header, and footer. So right-click on that detail band and go to form, header, and footer. Again, I got videos for form headers, too. Now I'm going to chop off all of these labels, right, just the label portions over here, and this guy. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on that one, too. I just selected all the labels. I'm going to cut them out, control X, and paste them up top here in the form header. Click on the form header and paste them. All right, this is where the headers are going to go across the top. So I got the ID the check number, the check date, the description. 
let's put is cleared all the way at the end because that's a checkbox. It'll look different. All right. Let's go debit, credit, amount, and amount cleared. I'm just going to make that say clear to save space. That's okay. And I'll put is cleared at the very end. Okay. I'm going to select all of these and size them just a little bit so they're on the grid like that. Let's make them all black so they're easier to see. Format, foreground color, black. I like to use the standard colors. I don't like the theme colors. I don't want my colors changing. I like, the, I like them where, that, where I set them. All right, now let's just slide these guys up underneath the labels. Now, ID is an auto number. The user can't change that, and it's probably not going to ever get that big. So I'm going to highlight it and make it gray. That just kind of visually tells the user, you can't change that. All right, there's the check number. Again, doesn't need to be super big. Check date will go here, and we really only want a short date for that field. So I'm going to double click on it and set the format to short date like that. In fact, you might not even need to see uh, four digit years. So instead, I'm gonna come up here and in the format, just type in mm, whoop, wrong, wrong field, right there. mm slash dd slash yy. Or of course, if you're over in Europe, you go dd, mm, yy, whatever you like. All right, I don't need a four digit year on that one. Okay, description can go here. That could be a little longer, but for now, we'll just leave it at that size. All right, so debit goes there. Let's resize that a little bit. Now, I don't know how big a checks you ever write out, but mine aren't usually that big. So I'm going to slide that right about there, maybe. That seems to be about right. I like to make all these number fields about the same width. So I'm going to put them all underneath each other like this. Credit, amount, and cleared amount, and make sure they're all sized the same, like that. Then I'll slide them out. Okay. Good. And finally, the cleared checkbox can go there. We could probably get rid of that, because this says cleared, so we kind of know what that means. Okay, or leave it if you want. Whatever you want to do. Okay, everybody else looks good. Let's bring that bottom up, like so. Okay, let's save it. I'm going to save this as my check reg F. And let's see what we got. Let's close it, and then reopen it again. All right, looks pretty good. A couple changes I'm going to make. Um, all the dollar amounts are aligned to the right. That's okay. Let's make sure we line these up to the right as well. And I want all of this stuff over here. I want lined up to the left. I just think it looks better with the text. And we got this annoying alternating background color. I really hate that. I can't stand that. So design view. Let's take these labels here and size them out correctly. Like so. And then I'm going to select all of them. Format, align right, just like that. All right, these guys are all aligned right, too. They should be by default, but we'll do it like that. And then I'll select all of these guys and align them to the left. Perfect. While I'm thinking about it, this and this are also calculated fields. So let's make those gray. And let's take the calculated fields out of the tab order. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on this one, shift that one, shift that one. I know in like Windows it's control, but in Access you use shift. Yeah, okay. I think control works as well. I always use, use, use shift though. Yeah, control works fine too. Right click, properties, and then we're going to find tab order. Excuse me, it's the tab stop property, tab stop, and make that no. That way when we're tabbing, our tab doesn't stop on those. Okay, let's see how the... End over here looks. All right, this is good. And we'll put a little checkbox right next to cleared. All right, let's save that. Oh, our, our alternating background color. Double click on the detail tab, go to format. Here's the, here's the background color I set. I'm going to make the alternating background color the same thing. That looks fine on reports, but I, I don't like it on forms. I don't know why. All right, let's save it, close it, open it back up again. And that's perfect. Okay. Probably make check them a little smaller, make the description feel a little bit bigger, but I think we're good for now. Well, yeah, let's do it real quick while I'm thinking about it. Do that. Slide this stuff over. We got a little bit of room on the right. We got plenty of space. I like to keep these forms so they fit in my video window. So I'll slide this stuff over like that. We can make description bigger. There we go. All right, save that. Close it. And perfect. That looks beautiful. 
one thing I also not notice is that we want, well, I want to move these labels over just a tiny bit because this column, the, one of the things about the currency format is that it leaves a little space over here for that negative number, right? So maybe just to put a tiny, tiny bit of space in there so that these guys all line up right over the numbers. So I like to do this. Just bring these in just a touch like that, like one, one little pip. Yeah, it looks better. That way they're not so far off to the right. Okay, let's put some totals down here on the bottom. Total of my debits, total of my credits, total of the amount would give me the actual amount in my account, and then the cleared amount would give me the amount that the bank thinks I have. So we're going to put four form footer to form. Try saying that 10 times fast. Four form footer totals. Four form footer totals. I, I, can't, I can't do it. Four, four form footer totals. <laughs> Forget it. Okay, I'm just going to copy this debit one. Copy and paste it down here. Okay, slide it right underneath debit. If you want to leave a little room in there like that, like that, you can even put a line in here to make it look cool. Where's that line tool? There's the line right there. Click and drag a little line underneath like that. Make that look cool like that. All right. Now open up the properties for debit. Go to all. Okay. Now, if I leave it as debit by itself, I'm going to see the current record that we're on. Let me show you so you, so you understand what's going on here. Save changes. Yes. Open it up. All right. Anything down here is still bound up here. So I'm bound to the debit field. So if I click on electric, you see the current record down here. That's how in some of my other videos I show you how, like, when we do contacts, you can click on a contact and see a big notes field in the footer. All right? So I don't want to see the current debit amount. I want to see a total of all of the debit amounts on the form. All right? So back to design view. What we're going to do for that is use the sum function. So equals the sum. Whoops. Equals... I can't type today, equals the sum of, and then in parentheses, debit, like that. And I'm going to change the name of this to sum debit. Okay, see what I did? Sum of debit, and then sum debit for the name of it. Now, save that, close it, open it back up again. There's the sum of all the stuff in the debit field that's currently on the form. All right, isn't that neat? Let's do the same thing for the other fields. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to put these in a query underneath the form, because now I can sum these up, and the form will treat them just like their fields in the table. All right, so take this, copy, paste, paste, paste. All right, let's slide these up here. And we'll just adjust what fields these are based on. This is credit, so this will change to credit and then some credit. All right, let's slide this over. This is amount, so sum of amount, sum amount. And this is cleared amount, sum cleared amount, and then uh, sum cleared amount. All right, and these two we can make gray, because they're, well, actually, these are all gray, so let's make these all calculated like that. It just visually tells the user you can't change that. That's all. Save it, close it, reopen it, and boom. And I'll save that like that so it's about that size. Okay? So now you can see there's 400 debits, $1,200 in credits. My actual balance is 800 That means I got $800 left in my account after all of my checks are cleared. And the bank should think at this point I've got $1,000. All right, I write another check, 104 on 116. This was for rent and $1,200, let's say. Okay. Now, one thing to notice is that this total down here won't update until you move to a different record. All right, so if I change this, let's say my rent was actually 900. If I tab, notice the footer hasn't updated. So you have to leave and go to a new record by tabbing or clicking before this stuff gets updated. Same thing where if you mark stuff cleared. All right, if I click on this gas, for example, let's say this check was cleared, all right, the total down here doesn't update until you leave that record. Now, with a little bit of programming, you can force that to update itself as soon as you change this value. You can use what's called an after update event. Let me show you. Right click, design view. Let's, let's do it to that checkbox here. Double click on it, go to events, go to after update, and then click on the dot, dot, dot button. All right, this is an event that runs after you update that field. 
All right, I have videos on this also, the after update event. Go look in the description down below. All right, click on that. You might get a little prompt that says, what kind of builder do you want? Pick code builder, but that will bring up is cleared, dot after, or is cleared underscore after update. This is what happens when you update that field. And literally all you need in here is one line of code, me dot refresh. That's it. That says redo all the calculations on this form after this field is updated. Save it. Close it. Open it back up again. And now if I click on this, notice that bottom in instantly changes. Right? Click, click, and it doesn't confuse anybody. Okay? You could do the same thing for these two fields over here. Right click, design view. You have to do them one at a time, unfortunately. Pick debit, event, after update. Now you're in the after update event for the debit, me dot refresh. All right, and you can do the same thing for credit too. You can pick it while you're in here. You don't, you don't have to keep going back to the form. Drop this down, find credit. Now you're in the credit before update, pick after update from this. This is the reason I don't like doing this because it leaves code fragments in here. Get rid of that. All right, that's not, I try not to use that, but you can. All right, so now we have me.refreshes in all three of those fields, the calculations. Those are really the only ones you really care about. Save changes, open it back up. And now if I change this to 1200 and hit tab, the footer instantly recalculates. Okay, so that's nice to do. Especially when you're dealing with calculations like this. Okay, let's say this bill was only 220. See, and it automatically instantly refreshes it. Okay, so let's say you get your bank statement in. All right, you look at it, you compare it with this one. You can click off the stuff that's cleared like that. Okay, now this stuff hasn't hit yet, so you better make a deposit, right? One sixteen. let's say that same day you were, you know, you were good, you made your deposit. Or let's say you got a customer check, and you want to put in here customer check, you know, whatever. You don't have to put the word deposit in there if you don't want to, okay? Um, that could be anything you want it to be. All right, let's say you put a credit in there of uh, $2,000, so now you're good. Okay. I wouldn't put that check number in here. This is your check number. Because in one of my classes, I show you how even though this is a text field, you can still write a loop that will count up and see if you have any missing checks. Right? If you go from 104 to, you know, 106, 107, 108, and then you might be like, well, where'd 105 go? You know, you can convert this over to, to a number and then run a loop and see what's missing. That's a more advanced class. Another thing you can do is when you do get your statement, and this is going to get pretty big, pretty long, pretty fast, right? Especially if you write a lot of checks. So you can come over here and filter this based on just the uncleared stuff. So when you get your statement in, right, you can right click on one of these fields over here and go is zero. That will show you just the uncleared stuff. And the totals will update too. So you can see this is all uncleared. I have, you know, $2,200 worth of stuff that's not cleared. Okay. And then this makes the list shorter. You can now go down this list you know, compare it with your bank statement and go check, 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 and just check off the stuff that's on your bank statement, right? That and then that. And then when you're all done, unfilter, and now you'll see everything again, including all the stuff that's filtered. Want to learn more about building a check register in Microsoft Access? The extended cut for members covers running balances. We'll build a printable report with a running balance on it. Then we'll add that to your account form so you can see a running balance right on the check register form. But with this example, I didn't just stop there. The extended cut wasn't the end of it. I actually decided to keep going and I built the whole check register seminar that's available on my website. It's over five hours long and it covers lots of additional stuff about building a check register database. Lesson one covers what you learned in this video. Lesson two is the running balance information from the extended cut for members. Lesson three covers printing checks. Lesson four is about batch printing checks. In lesson five, we set up a list of payees and categories. In lesson six, we'll make the database handle multiple accounts. Lesson seven adds all kinds of extra formatting and other features. Then we cover reporting. In Lesson 8, we build a pie chart to show expenses by category. And in Lesson 9, we build a grouped expense report and a transaction report. So once again, that is my check register seminar. You will find a link to that in the description below the video.
But if you are interested in just the running balance information, that can be found in the extended cut for members only. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like level one, level two is just one dollar, and that is free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. If you have a specific problem you need help with, or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.